Hey folks, welcome back. Day three. Um, sorry about all the Schoology stuff. That's way out of my hands of control. Um, but uh, we're taking some steps to make sure that that isn't as huge of an issue for you going forward, okay? Um, what you're going to see here today is we're going to talk through magnetic force and we're also going to talk right hand rule. Um, I do have office hours tomorrow morning. Um, don't forget about those if that's something that you are interested in. And don't forget tomorrow we are going to meet through Zoom meeting. Um, I will send the link out individually to each hour so that you can uh, attend that meeting. I haven't scheduled it yet, but I will get that scheduled for us so that we can uh, we can do some stuff with that. Okay, sound good? All right, let's get going then. All right, so today, uh, just a little recap for you, just so that you remember what stuff looks like. Um, what we're going to see is that a magnetic field and its force. Now, um, a magnetic field is requires a moving charge. Right? That's a big deal for us, meaning that we have to have something that's actually moving in order for a magnetic, uh, magnetic field to exist for us. All right? Two magnetic fields exert a force against each other. So what we end up seeing here is, is that um, when these two like bar magnets, for example, if you put two Norse together, what you're going to experience is you're going to experience that force. That's going to be that repulsive force, that force that's pushing against it. Okay. I can't stress it enough to you. All magnet, all magnet, magnetism, sorry, that's a tough word this morning, is the result of a moving charge, all right? It's in a moving electric charge. That's a big deal going forward for us, okay? So um, here's what we got. The force exerted by a B field on a moving charge is described by this. So what do we mean is, is that if we've got a single point or a single point charge or a single charged object, and we can find out how much force the B field is pushing on it. The way we do that is QVB, all right? And again, this is just for a single point charge, okay? Um, so the way that this sets up, Q is our charge in Coulombs, something we've seen before, right? V is our velocity, uh, meters per second. If you notice, um, still a normal V. It's not like uh it's not like our fancy V that we had back back in um, back in um, angular stuff or rotational stuff, which was omega. Um, it's just a normal one for us. And then the new one is B. B is our magnetic field strength in Teslas. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, um, but it's named after Nikola Tesla, not the car. Yeah, this one was around a little bit before that. But, all right. I know. Yeah, it seems odd. Okay. Um, so charge is Q, that's Coulombs, V is velocity in meters per second, and V is the magnetic field strength of Teslas. All right. Let me run one of these for you. All right. So here we go. So T, just to break down for you what Tesla means or what it is actually stands for. Um, it's Newton's on top for either one we have. Uh, for our point charge, which is the one on the left, that's going to be Coulombs times meters per second. Um, we'll use the one on the right where it's amps in times meters in just a little bit, okay? All right, so uh, an electron passes through a magnetic field at right angles to the field at a velocity of 4.0 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. The strength of the magnetic field is 0 0.50 Tesla. What is the magnitude of the force acting on the electron? Now, notice here I didn't give you the charge of an electron. Um, I'm hopeful you still remember that, maybe even have it in notes. That charge is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs. Um, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. It will be on the quiz. Or if, if you need that information, it'll be given to you in the problem so that you, uh, so you don't have to worry about memorizing any of that stuff, okay? Um, now, um, if you check out some other sources out there, I know I put a crash course um, on YouTube. Um, they'll talk about the sign of theta. Um, for us, we're not gonna to get too in depth with that right now. Everything's either gonna be at a right angle to it, a 90 degree angle, or it's gonna be parallel with it, which we'll talk about in a little while, okay? All right, so set up for this one, right? Data table looks like this. Our velocity is 4.0 times 10 to the six meters per second. Our charge is 1.609 times 10 to the negative coulombs. Our, our uh, B field strength um, is 0.5 Teslas. We want to find out how much magnetic force is acting against this electron. Okay, so uh, we just basically plug and chug, 
put in our Q of 1.60 times 10 to the 19th, multiply that by four times 10 to the sixth, and multiply that by half of a Tesla, all right? Um, our magnetic force then ends up being 3.22 uh, times 10 to the negative 13th newtons. Again, remember, because it's an electron, this is a big force on it, okay? It's gonna be accelerating pretty, pretty hard to work through this, okay? All right, another formula for you, all right? So if we got a, a current carrying conductor, like a wire, all right, uh, what we can do is we can calculate the force on this thing as well, or the magnetic force that's happening with this. So this one, um, again, it's magnetic field strength in Tesla T. It's the current in a wire, which is amps A, and then it's the length of that, that wire is in the magnetic field in meters. Now, don't forget, the way that I can mess with you, maybe milliamps, not likely, but maybe. Uh, meters, um, likely it'll be meters just because trying to put you know a five meter coil into a magnetic field does get a little bit tricky. Um, there are places that can do that. Um, we just don't have a lot of them around us right now, okay? So then a couple questions for you. Oop, let me get myself out of the way here, sorry about that. All right, if the magnetic field is very strong, do you think that this will produce more force on the wire or less? So if that magnetic field is really, really strong, what you're gonna see is that this should produce more, right? Because if we increase quantitatively the, the number of B, then what we're gonna have is, is a higher force coming out of that as well, okay? Uh, next one, if, the, if there's more current in the wire, right? More current is gonna create more magnetic force. Right, because you have more stuff going through it, okay? So again, quantitatively, if we double that I number, it's gonna make that force number just that much bigger, all right? If there's more wire in the magnetic field, do you think that it will produce more force in the wire or less? Again, if we increase this, this one, just like we've done with B and with I, uh, what's gonna end up happening is that the length of wire will, if we add more to it, cause more force, okay? So just some, just some qualitative looks at it, just some ways to see it from a different perspective for us, okay? All right, uh, practice one for you. Don't worry about the X's on the screen. Don't worry about um, that stuff right now. So we're gonna say the weight of this thing is 10 newtons, which is the force of gravity. Um, it'll also be our force of our magnetic field right now pushing on this, thing, okay? Um, what we see is that then we have a field intensity of two Teslas, we have a length of wire of half a meter, all right? We wanna know our current and how much is running through that thing in order to satisfy this. Okay, so what we do is we just start plugging stuff in. We got 10 for our force. We know our field intensity, or our field strength, sorry, is two, and we know our length of wire is a half. Um, so here again, we're just gonna solve for I. Um, so a couple different ways you can look at this thing. If you want to, you can do the right-hand side stuff first. So two times a half, a half of two should be one. All right, oops, sorry, jumped to an answer, right? So then we just take 10 divided by one, and that's how we get our I. Other way, take it in steps, right? Um, 10 divided by two, that's five. Five divided by a half, that's gonna be 10. Half of five is, or multiplying by two, you get the gist, all right? So our current here is 10 amps, all right? Um, again, that's what homework will be based on today is those two questions. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in, the, in this lecture here, okay? All right, now to the stuff that we're gonna meet on tomorrow with. So in that meeting tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk you through what's called the right-hand rule, all right? Um, so I'm gonna devote a bunch of, uh, bunch of time to this tomorrow. Um, I may work some other problems too during that lecture, but likely it's gonna be all right-hand rule examples. Now, right-hand rule, um, there are three of them. Um, we're basically gonna use one of them. We're gonna modify it a little bit because the, uh, the way that uh, other people have used them, it's not bad. Um, they just use a different portion of their right hand than what we'll use. Um, and our way seems to make a little bit more sense, at least to me, um, and I guess you can be the judge of that thing as well, okay? Um, so the right-hand rules are a very easy way to remember directions for us, all right? So one of the rules is gonna tell us the direction of the magnetic force. 
Okay? And the other two are going to talk about direction of the magnetic field and the object going through that magnetic field. All right. Now, this is going to require you to move a little bit. So what I will try to do is I will try to show this up on my camera up on the top of the screen. Now, one favor I'm going to ask is figure out where north, south, east, and west are. Um, maybe the easiest way to do it is figure out where did the sun rise this morning on you. Okay, that's going to be east. All right, um, and then just use your uh, never eat shredded or yeah, never eat shredded wheat. All right, I know you got weird ones. Stop it right now. Somebody said something about soggy waffles. Soggy waffles, man, those are still okay. Those aren't bad to eat, all right? But never eating shredded wheat as a kid, man, that was a big deal. Ugh, gross, yuck. All right, anyway, here we go, sorry. So uh, the three parts that we're looking at, we're looking at our thumb, all right? Oops, sorry, thumb. We're looking at our four fingers, all right? And we're looking at the palm of our hand, I know. The uh, northern lights are blocking it out for you. It's a little tough, all right? But here's what we get. Okay, which of these three can exert the largest force? So are we talking about taking that thumb and smacking somebody with it? Eh, not a lot of force there, okay? Are we talking about fingers, right? Fingers, pliable, movable, not gonna be, not gonna be super helpful for us. But if we take that palm now, and we wanna hit somebody with that thing, that thing's gonna leave a mark. I think you call that a five star, is that right? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so it is the palm, all right? So what we end up seeing is the four fingers represent magnetic fields, meaning that if we keep them together, they are going to go in a parallel direction to each other, right? Now, granted, I know some of us can cross fingers. We can do stuff like that, right? We can even go like that, z sharp. but hey, all right? What we see is that if we keep them like this, then we've got our four magnetic field lines, all right? And that they're gonna travel in that same direction, just like you do yesterday, okay? And that leaves a thumb, all right? The thumb represents a flow of positive charge carriers, basically a stream of positive. Think of a proton, think of something like that, right? When somebody gives you the thumbs up, that means, hey, good job. That's a positive thing, right? All right, old uh, Julius Caesar, right? Gives the thumbs up for some, I don't remember, whatever. I know somebody said something about that last year, but I forgot, okay? So here was what you got. Fingers, B-field lines, thumb, current, or positive charge flow. The palm on here, that's the magnetic field. That's the magnetic force, okay? So make sure you got those written down so that as we go through this example, we can do that thing as well, okay? Now, I feel like I gotta say this thing here. Um, this is called the right-hand rule for a reason. The reason for this being a right-hand rule is because the right hand sets all this stuff up for us. And somebody long ago came up with these right hand rules and they use specifically the right hand. One of the most common mistakes I'm gonna see, one of the most common mistakes you're gonna make is all of a sudden you're gonna start using that left hand. No, 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 no left hand today. All right hands, okay? All right, so here we go. So there's your, uh, there's the velocity of your uh, charge carrying or positive charge carrying particle. There is that magnetic force slapping around a little bit. And hey, guess what? There it is. There's that field. Um, there's that magnetic field. All right, our field line, so to speak. All right, all of these are going to be at right angles with each other. Like I said, there is some. There's an addition to this equation that we could use. Um, it deals with the sine. If all of a sudden our angles get a little bit funky, but we're not going to have that happen right now. Okay. All right. Let's try this one out first. Okay. So, what's the direction? of the magnetic force if a proton is shot east into the magnetic field that goes from the ground to the sky, okay? So what's the direction of the magnetic force, my palm, if a proton is shot east into the magnetic field through, uh, and the magnetic field goes from the ground to the sky, okay? So what I did was I highlighted a few things here. The proton is shot east, that's my thumb. All right, so now what I gotta do is I gotta point this thing east. For me, east is back kind of over my left shoulder. All right, so if the magnetic field goes from my, uh, goes from the ground to the sky, that means it goes up, all right? So what happens is, is that by having my thumb point east and my fingers point up, my palm then is facing south. 
Okay, so my palm is going to be facing south in this case. All right. So again, the thumb got pointed to the east direction. So if you know which way the sun came up this morning, that's the way your thumbs point. All right. My fingers then are pointing upwards, right? Because it's from the ground to the sky. So what ends up happening is, boom, that thing's going to apply a magnetic force south. Okay. All right. Next one. What's the direction of the magnetic force if the proton is shot upwards through a magnetic field that points south? Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. You're gonna look goofy doing this stuff. When I demo this in front of the class, huh, you folks would laugh at me, giggle at me, snicker at me. Some of you would take videos of me. This maybe is a good way for me to get my first TikTok out there. Ah, uh, that might be an idea for later on. Be aware of that, all right? Here we go. So proton is shot upwards. Up, 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 up. Thumb goes up. All right. Magnetic field points south. All right. Fingers are pointing south. All right. Now, if you notice, I got the back of the hand to you. Mm -mm. We want the four, we want that palm. It's on the other side. All right. That thing now, that that palm for me, that thing is going to be pointing ah, east. All right. So thumbs up. Fingers are pointing towards the south, right? right towards um, Iowa, if you want to go that route, okay? Yeah, all right. So east is the way we go, okay? All right, um, another one for us. Again, directionality for us here, this is tough just because we're talking north, south, east, and west, all right? Um, when we run this in actual quiz or test stuff, it'll likely be in relation to the page or the screen, okay? Which we'll get to tomorrow for you, okay? Um, so what's the direction of the F mag if a proton is shot north through a magnetic field that points east? All right, so positive is going north, all right? Magnetic field is going east, oh man, okay. So gotta try and get this right. Okay, so my fingers are pointing towards the place that I woke up this morning with, okay, with the sun on. All right, so for us now, this thing should be going downwards. Okay, again, thumb direction that the proton is shot. That's north. That's a good way. Okay, that's toward, you know, Canada. All right, magnetic field points east, downwards, down we go. Okay, all right, so. Um, if you got questions with this stuff, let me know. All right. Otherwise, um, we're going to talk tomorrow. Um, and that's what our class meeting is going to be about. We're basically going to run through a bunch of these ones just so that we can make you feel comfortable with this. Um, it's going to look weird. It's going to look odd. You're going to feel, you're going to get frustrated at first, but once we kind of figure out the, the gist of it, like that your thumb is that positive part and that your fingers are the magnetic field and that your palm is the force of the magnet, and then it starts to make hopefully a little bit more sense for us, okay? Um, all right, homework now. I know yesterday I got a ton of emails from people when Schoology crashed and went down. Um, homework is still gonna be in Google Sheets. Um, I put it in there just because then you don't need a calculator. And I'll show you how to do some stuff on there um, to be able to work with the different cells that they have in there. Um, and be able to hopefully feel comfortable working on that stuff. Um, if all of a sudden Schoology is not working out real well for us, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna put it up on Instagram and Twitter today, okay? Um, the favor I'm gonna ask, you gotta show me work, all right? Um, so just lay out a problem, just set it up so that I can see numbers and then an equal sign, okay? Whether they're all multiplied together, whether you're dividing some out, something like that, no work. You're, you'll see on uh, you'll see on your uh, on your campus then that that's why you got two and a half out of five, okay? Um, like I said on the like I said on here, um, what you'll see is uh, you'll start to see uh, how to do a little bit of that work in Google Sheets, just so you don't have to use a calculator, like I said before, some quick keys and some stuff like that. All right, um, I'll make sure that I get that up there um, after this one goes live as well. Okay. Um, that's all I got for the day, folks. Hey, hope you have a great day. Um, hope you're all doing well. Um, remember, tomorrow we got office hours before school and we got our office hours after school. That stuff's up on Schoology if you want to grab that. 
take a photo of that right now. Um, I also today will send you um, the information for meetings tomorrow um, during your actual class period time that I ask you to be at, okay? Otherwise, um, that's all I got for the day so far. Um, make sure you get that work done, uh, turn that into me, and um, then we'll be good, all right? Ooh, that's bad. Let's see if we can stop.